Hello friends, welcome to my Royal Family News Channel. Before moving on to the video, if you are not subscribed to my channel, do not forget to subscribe and turn on notifications, so let's move on to the video. The Meghan Markle Jam product launch isn't going well at all there is much cynicism that Meghan has leapt on the Lewis horse to follow in King Charles's Highgrove footsteps, compared with Highgrove being set side by side with her brand. What to Meghan's reply with? Today, join me again on my YouTube channel and let's find out. Okay, so before I get too much into the article, let me bring up that recent call the king had Meghan come back to England this summer but with he kids. And Harry and Meghan were also head done. I mean, the need to call out the royal family for what their kids are up to. Anywho, forget about it. Meghan went and just dropped some fresh jam pretty exciting stuff, huh? Oh boy. However, it sounds like the royal fans aren't actually in love with her jam. Instead, they are purchasing the king's Highgrove strawberry jam and that means more money for the king. So, what does this have to do with a two-paragraph comment on two separate stories? And curious that the claim was forgotten as a result by Tbi Kinar. I'm just joking. It is just a concept I came up with now. It is a silly product that only die-hard fans would be flogging out their doors to buy, the proof is in how easily they have kings jammed it. We do not even know where it came from, but has simply indicated that the product is causing a lot of controversy for some time. All right. With that being said, a bit of jam comparing between King Charles and Meghan. Fair enough, well Highgrove it is then. Well, King Charles's organic strawberry preserves of course hence the preserves that encapsulate the zing of English summer berries. Such a beautiful combination of sweet juicy ripe strawberries harmonizing with lemon. Highgrove Original Recipe Strawberry Preserve, crafted from the Highgrove Estate's bounty, this strawberry jam is freshly boiled in small quantities as per our original traditional recipe it is very aromatic, lightly fruity. It also looks very delicious and mouth-watering when it is presented themselves. The jam is packed in a well-wood engraved glass bushel. Because it is organic and produced in smaller amounts, there is no shipping to Europe, this of course suggesting that we are dealing with a semi-amateur drink. In addition to the jam, other Highgrove items are up for grabs including cookies and wines they sell. The whole Highgrove range is now organic, and it supports charitable causes selected by the prince. It's not actually that cost prohibitive to mail from the UK to the US as long as you buy a lot of this, which is I think what most people are going for. I mean, that good. Now, change back over, and feast your eyes this one, Meghan Markle's favorite jam. The irony of the color is the first thing I notice. Why is Meghan Markle's jam such a lurid color, compared to Highgrove version? Highgrove version is light and natural dollar query zero, it looks great. Meghan's doesn't. Ah, eh, I guess that actually, the answer to this question I might know. Megan must have just made jam from Costco and forgot to stir it out before bottling in the jars she ordered off Amazon. Which is to say, it's just plain overboiled and that those cheap commercial jams are barely cooked at a high high temperature. It could be and it has to meet workplace standards, but the consequences are ass. Which is to say, it drives those pink grey berries, and particularly when the berries are underripe, another issue as they pick them half unhatched. From what I've heard on the grapevine, it could be one of those sugar-free jams which if I'm honest usually are just a viscous set fruit puree with some other type of sweeteners such as stevia or xylitol and then they will use thickeners like xanthan gum. This would explain why the victim appears so pathetic. Like, not strawberries cooked out in sugar. If it actually was that, it would be an even deeper red. At this point I despise the taste of those fake sweeteners like stevia, can't stand it. It does the same thing to my tummy, I have abdominal cramps all night from that garbage. Oh wait, this is not something you just eat without a little bit of taste test the first. Ergo, Meghan Markle does a poisoning on all of her so-called friends and this jam is basically between 98 to 99% fake sugar which she hasn't fucking told any animal's owners yet. She will be in deep shit. Frankly, this is a disaster in the making much like most Meghan Markle initiatives. 
I will not buy stuff like that for my family, full stop. Basically I will only ever buy nice jam, such as what King Charles is producing or I'll make my own. So, you know where to go with that. I do too. Another year my auntie cranks out the jam, and it is all delightful tasting, but none of has ever looked like Megan's crap. Strawberries aren't even in season, so they definitely won't be as red or juicy as possible. Honestly, I think it is a couple of weeks too soon. Typically we do not start to see strawberry festivals and whatnot until May so. Then maybe this is when Megan should drop this jam, not now. Because I don't know about you, but those off-season strawberries taste like garbage. I assume they are substantially grown in a greenhouse down in Mexico or something, but I never ever think it opens and tastes fantastic. They're just not sweet. When it comes to strawberries, good need seasons. At least I believe they are grown in greenhouses in Mexico, but they never really taste good. It just is not sweet. So I enjoy the wait when they are in season. That is when I buy my strawberries in early summer. So in the manner that I was taught by my grandmother and auntie about how to make jam, you've got to carefully skim off that scum as it boils up to the top and allow it to slowly come up to a boil. It really is a labor of love. Well, if you don't, your jelly is going to be all cloudy and pretty unappealing. Well, if you want dark, clear jam the kind that we're going for, then what you must do is use figs of best quality and only very ripe ones but not overripe, and then skim off the top all along by boiling it on a little heat. Of jam, I am no expert, but neither is Meghan Markle. Her jam looks absolutely unappetizing, it quite literally appears as though someone has poured ketchup over her. They also have dreadful design and quality, such as labels peeling off and not knowing what you are really using. It makes me want to know what she is thinking. But Meghan Markle's jam seems to be nothing more than a fake version of Highgrove. Sad as it is, like with all counterfeits this product pales in comparison to the genuine model. Apart from the billions made by selling out his son for personal profit over 20 years, one major difference between Highgrove and Meghan Markle's brand is where the money goes, i.e. to charity in King Charles's case whereas Sussex Deluxe will keep all of that loot for herself as funding her opulent lifestyle. Well, none of it will have to be earmarked for charity measures that's for sure. Meghan Markle's jam also doesn't have an FDA-approved organic badge, which means it's not organic. I have known for a while that they are one of the dirtiest conventional foods grown in the States, doused with dangerous pesticides and often illegal on levels safe to eat. I have a million reasons I would not buy anything Megan tried to sell me, this is one of them. I cannot even imagine what she is trying to do. Okay, who is she even targeting? That seems to be at odds with the jam-eating American public especially in health-crazy California where gluten-free and low-sugar diets are prized. I do not understand how she thinks she is going to make it doing that a festile. And why would anyone in the UK choose her crappy product over local alternatives? That is unless this is an elaborate front. Here, I have ranted against this absurdity of peddling pseudo-luxury to the wealthy. This is harmful for society as a whole, breeds elitism promotes unsustainable behavior, and widens the socio-economic divide. Where does this fit in with Harry and Meghan wanting to present themselves as humanitarian warriors who only want the best for everyone else, inquiring minds may ask. That's it for our video my friends, I hope you have liked it, please let me know your thoughts in the comments, and like the video. If you haven't done so yet if you want to be first to be informed about my content, Please subscribe to the channel and make sure you turn on notifications. Thank you for spending this time with me, take care of yourself and stay healthy, I'll see you in the next one.